It is uh, 6.05 on Monday, December 20th. The Board of Commissioners of the Hardwick Electric Department is meeting. 5.05. What? 5.05. Oh, I was looking at the clock. Yeah. It is 5.05, yes. <laughs> I did this last month, too. I could change the clock, or I could look at my watch. You have a big ladder. Um, okay, at 5.05. Uh, Commissioners O'Connell, Prevo, Ambrosino, and Gedankin are present, as is General Manager Sullivan. Uh, Dave Mitchell from Hardwick Trails uh, is here. Uh, Jim from HCTV is here. Um, Beth Essery uh, is on Zoom. I see two pictures. Is, are the, I, just, I used two to get both sides of the room. Got it. Got it. Um, okay. Uh, so a quorum is present. Uh, are there any modifications to the agenda? Hearing none, the agenda. Any objection to the agenda? Hearing none, the agenda is, is approved. Um, Mike sent around the minutes from the November meeting. Um, late. Late. <laughs> I was going to say today. Um, I don't know if people have had a chance to look at them. Um, I did. And one thing, the minutes, when the, when the board has a motion, the, the exact language of the motion needs to be recorded, not so I think the, amend, the minutes need to be amended to reflect that, because there were a couple of things that we mm -hmm. voted on at the meeting. <coughs> Did anybody have any other amendments to the minutes? Are you talking about the last few bullets? Uh, yeah, I think those were the only things that we actually took a vote on, you know, where there was a motion and, and we voted. So, um, but I think, I think subject to including the language from the, uh, we can't sign them, but we can approve them, I think. Um, okay. So is there a motion to approve the minutes as amended? Second. Any objection? Hearing none, the minutes are approved. One point on minutes. Um, we still don't have minutes on up to anything anywhere close to up to date on the website, mm -hmm. and that's something that we have been asked repeatedly by the select board and others to have, and it, it really has to be done. I think. Yeah. I don't know if others feel differently, but I think I think yeah. it's it's I, th I think it's I think the last minutes are from January or February. It's quite yeah, a while ago. Yeah. Um, so I think that that. Yeah, it's going to be much longer for Ryan to get that fix going. I'll, uh, if, if, I if thought it, we can post them to the town site. Well, first, well, we could post them to the town site, but frankly, if our, this is my view, I don't know if the people on the board share it, but if our. Hi, Michael. Hi. Hey, hang on one moment. We're just, we're coming up on you here. Give us about okay. five minutes. Can we plug him in on? I have no idea. Did we give him the Zoom link? He's driving. Oh, he's oh. driving. Doesn't want to be on. <laughs> doesn't want to be on video. He could be. He could be calling it anyway. I. 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 I what I was going to say is, if if our website company can't manage to fix this in the next week or two, yeah. I think we need a new website yes. people. This totally is ridiculous. Great. This is just. This is. <laughs> I mean, there are other issues with the re website, but, but this one has been ongoing for, yeah. Yeah. well, it, it dates back to the meeting that we had with the select board over six months ago. Yeah. So, so this, is, this is just not, in my view, acceptable, and we've got to get that sorted. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, we have one member from the public, but he's on the agenda, so I think um, if it's okay with you, Dave, we'll deal with you in, in the agenda item. Okay. So the, the next item on the agenda is modification of the conservation easement um, for um, H11. 
And I understand that Michael Lou Smith is on the phone. Mike, can you hear everybody? <laughs> Mike? Maybe not. Hello. Hello. Can you hear? Did you hear any of the discussion that was going on? No, I couldn't really hear. Okay. So we'll try and speak loud. Okay. So basically what I'd like you to do, um, as we discussed, kind of give the board an overview of uh, where we're at, what you've looked at, why you've looked at it, um, describe the two uh, new possible areas uh, that you've evaluated and what you did to look at those and uh, just give us an overview of where you're at with everything. Okay. Also, sure. uh, also, if you could tell us who you are and what your role um, and this right. is, that would be sure. a great help. Yeah, uh, so Michael Lou Smith, um, I work with Arrow Environmental, and we did a bunch of the environmental work for the Billings Road, Road Solar uh, installation. Uh, and so we were kind of involved in uh, stream work and the deer wintering area and uh, pretty much most of the environmental work. Um, both of uh, two of my partners have also been involved. Um, Dory, who did some of the uh, site visits with the state, um, in particular regarding the deer wintering areas, uh, and then Aaron, who does a lot of the mapping, uh, <clears throat> has also been involved in this. Uh, and so, basically, with the three alternatives that we looked at, you know, we were looking at an area that could. Uh, be appropriate for deer wintering area mitigation um, and also kind of not infringe on any of the recreation trails that are currently in place or even planned. Uh, and so, as you, you saw the map that I have uh, or that we made, and <clears throat> the first one is just basically swapping some land from the south to the north. Uh, and you know maintain kind of that that main area, um, and then the second one is north of the existing gravel pit, and then the third one just kind of on the other side of the, the vast trail from that. Um, the the tricky part with this is that you know with the there's there's a, there's a couple different ways to define deer wintering areas, and the state really uh, likes their maps. And so we kind of highlighted that in the uh, on the map. I think it's in orange, and that's kind of their mapped, quote unquote, mapped deer wintering area. Now the maps uh, that they use are a little um, rough and sometimes not feel verified. Um, and so oftentimes, you know, you can kind of uh, tweak the boundaries, change the boundaries. You know, it's, it's more of a remote map that that really needs to be feel verified. Um, having said that, um, they say often, you know, kind of defaults to their map. They say, well, we like, you know, we like the things that are already there in the, on the map. Um, and so there's the deer wintering piece of the whole puzzle about where to put this uh, mitigation area if it's going to move at all. The other piece is, uh, you know, avoiding multiple uses that also occur on the property. Right, so mainly that being trail building, um, existing trails and plans for trails. And so I talked with uh, Eric Remick, uh, who's you know, you know pretty involved with the trail building committee up there, and um, just tried to figure out a place that kind of met both of those criteria. You know, that was deer wintering habitat and uh, didn't have any. You know, plan existing trails or any plans for trails, uh, and so all three alternatives that we proposed met those criteria to some degree. Um, Mike, you had asked about why not like further along the northern boundary or um, up there, and I did discuss that those areas with Eric, and he had mentioned that he had. They had plans for building trails all out to there. Uh, and so that's why those didn't kind of make the cut on the map. Um, so, you know, as the three alternatives 
ago, certainly it seems like the number one, you know, would maybe be the easiest sell. Uh, number two, you know, I did some a field verification for number two because it was outside of the quote unquote mapped deer yard. Uh, and it seemed to, you know, be comparable habitat as to what's on the other side of the bass trail that is mapped. Uh, and so those also seem to be like they would be viable alternatives. Uh, and so it's just a matter of at this point figuring out, you know, what what the next approach is, and then it's kind of like, you know, obviously up to up to your folks about how you want to. Uh, what other steps you want to take to kind of keep this moving along? Okay, so 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 just shifting the area north and roughly what tripling quadrupling it in size is the one labeled alternative one that you say you think would be the easiest to sell. Well, so just to be clear, that these are there's no increase in size in any of these. Oh. Um, the, the shifting at north, basically, you would you would forego the, the area to the south that has trails. Okay. And replace it with an area to the north that doesn't have trails. So this section here. Right, uh, right, but that. Take that section. Right, but that section looks like, to me, three to four times the size, maybe three times the size of the section that we'd be losing. No, I don't think so. No. I think the whole mitigation area is bound in red. Yes. In the red periphery. It's, it's, it's this little thing right it's up on the here. right side, right corner. Okay. Um. The one the one thing I can't see is on the, the map with the that says double track and the map. That's yeah, he does. Those aren't his maps. This those, is his oh, okay, map. okay. Okay. I thought. Uh, yeah, I couldn't see the overlay. I can't really see where the. Yeah, I couldn't lay it out either. So is this whole thing? I'm I'm thoroughly yeah, confused. Yeah. I'm sorry. It's that little maroon oh, right. or so right right now. Now. Okay, this is this is the whole mitigation area. Right now, this is it. Right. So what they're saying is get rid of that. That's where the trails and move are. Move it to here. Oh, move it to there. Yeah. Okay. I couldn't I I wasn't I just wasn't seeing that yeah. black bit. Got it. So I, I guess the, the question of, I mean I have how does that correspond to the existing trails? I mean does this does it really resolve? Do, yeah, does it does yeah. it does it take care of the issue? Well, there are two issues. One is where the trails are. The other is the issue of not building anything. And and my question is, and it's probably more a question for Dave, uh, whether the interest and again because there's no overlay of the trail proposals with with these maps, it's hard for me to know exactly where the stuff would hit, but the, the conservation easement prohibited use of some existing trails in the winter time, but it also prohibited building any new trails for even summer use in the mitigation area. And so one question that I have is, is there is, is the area, is the swap just taking care of the existing trails or is it taking care of the area where the trails would be built also? Right, so I mean, from my conversations with Eric, it would take care of both of those things, you know. Uh, well, there, that's not, so there is currently, I think, a trail that goes down to the old past house down there and they would just, that's not part of their trail network, it's just kind of a walking trail a one way and there and back kind of thing. And that would be abandoned. Is, um, is, but they didn't have any other kind of uh, you know, longer term plans to build anything in that area. Is, 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 is that the trail that that would go from Dennis Pudva's property down to get down to the lumberyard no. and down no. to the village? It's a, no. it's a, it actually gets substantial historical value. I mean, that particular. The, if you go down Billings Road, and right at the bottom of the hill, if you just go straight, it turns into kind of a grassy okay. over a knoll down into where the pest house used to be, right by the water. Okay. I, the trail to Pudva, you would turn north. You turn more to the, the left project. as you're yep. coming down. Yeah, it's been a while since I've walked it, but if I want to walk into town, that's yeah. what that saves me. So a lot. essentially, option A is to take the added area 
that was added to the, or the original mitigation area, get rid of that and move it to this section on the very north. And but still south of Billings Road. Are there, and, and there are just as many deer that hang out in that area as in the... Well, it's all in their map, the mapped area, so... We need to train the deer to go a particular <laughs> spot. Yeah, just throw some corn in there. Um. So I invited Dave to, for him to be able to give you feedback on the existing area, the existing conditions that are on that area and the plans that they have and the limitations of that area for any plans so that you would have full information on the existing Great. area. Cool. And then Dave can also speak to future plans to the north that he shared with me since we were last together. So I think if we heard from him here, that would be helpful information too. Yeah. So the floor okay. is yours. So Mike, can you hear me? Yeah. So, are, are we to pick one of these three areas? Yes, we're going to propose one of these three modified areas. So, if I don't know how we can choose if we can't really see an accurate overlay. But that's what Dave's. Oh, okay, sorry. Yeah, and, and we don't have anything on the north anyway. So, yeah. uh, the the existing area, the alternate one that has the pest house trail and a small loop trail. Yeah. Um, we would love to be able to keep that and perhaps add to that. And that's in the alternate area? Yep. That's in alternate area one. So that sounds to me like we shouldn't we should be looking at two or three. And and, and alternate area two is on the west side of the vast trail, is that correct? Yes. Yeah. And and we have no plans west of the vast trail. Oh good. Okay. Yep. So alternate area two would be ideal for us because because okay. we're if anything we're going to be going north we would love to go north and connect to Greensboro eventually yeah yeah and, and and alternate area three would be kind of put a big block on us right there we wouldn't be able to get through there is that so you're right alternate area three um, part of that is along a stream and a wetland yep. Um, and so it's unlikely you'd be building in there anyway. Correct. Um, so, you know, take that under consideration as well. Yeah. Yeah, and it looks like there's room to get around that to the right. east. Yeah. So I, I would recommend that, that alternate area two, just because I know we're not planting anything over there. And, you know, it's... Uh, Alternate area one, I, we already have some existing trails that there is some beautiful terrain that we'd love to, you know, maybe add some little small pieces of trail to. No, big. Yeah. And, and it would be nice to have that available to us in the future. Yeah. This, this is just north of H11, pretty much. Yeah, it's two ways. ways. Alternate two again. That's a good way to start. Yeah. So just to make sure I understand on the mapping is the alternate area two would replace the entire current mitigation area to just pick up the whole thing and like acreage and put it up north. Yeah. Oh, oh okay. you're moving the whole thing north. And you like you and Eric and the, the rest of the committee like that because now your contiguous trail area isn't yes. affected. Yeah. Right. Got it. And, and from well, a that seems great if you can do it. Yeah, from a deer wintering standpoint, two is just as good as one. Hmm. I mean, this is, and, and is it a little bit bigger maybe than one? I, I'm I'm thinking about selling sell this it? to A N R because um, right. we have we we will likely have a bit of an uphill battle, is what I've been told. I don't have any firsthand knowledge on this. Yeah. So what's your feedback on that, Mike? So, yeah, they're all the same size, um, and, you know, bringing up A&R is, um, one thing I did want to mention is, you know, we're a little unsure how A&R is going to receive this or approach it even, um, just because it doesn't, this kind of thing is, doesn't come up very often. Um, and a couple considerations um, is that, you know, they, like I mentioned before, for better or worse, they like the areas that are mapped as deer winning area better on the remote map. Um, they 
all, when Dory was out with the, the a and biologist, he liked the fact that you were giving up trails, which didn't make a lot of sense to me, but that's, <laughs> that's what he liked. Um, and so it may require, you know, a field visit with them to kind of assess what is ha- what habitat is. Um, and uh, I guess it's, I guess I just wanted to put out there, it's kind of a question mark. Like, I don't know how they're, they're going to approach it, you know? Well, yeah. well, the whole point of this exercise from our vantage point is to not be giving up any tr- existing trails and not be giving up the right to build new trails. On land. On land, on where, land. where Hardwick Trails has an interest in building yeah. new trails. Yeah. So... Yeah, I, yep, I, I understand. And that would be palatable to yeah. an R. Yeah, which is why I asked whether, you know, perhaps expanding the areas somewhat so that, that in fact, they would have more deer wintering area. Well, building on your I mean, idea, Lynn, it, what about, Mike, the, you, you know, you did a nice job matching exactly the acreage if, if in alternate two, we were willing, I, I wouldn't make this the first offer, but if we had to sweeten the offer to ANR, it looks like you could go continue north to our boundary, our yellow boundary there, and, and add some acreage, and you could even go on the east side of the vast trail a little bit without impinging too much on yeah. the trail. Right, I think that you know being able to offer that um, would certainly, May certainly sweeten the pot. Being flexible with that, the acreage there, I think, may be may uh, be important. So, what do you think, Lynn? Yeah, no, that was exactly what I was thinking. Was that yeah. if again, it wouldn't be the first choice, but uh, but if we can, if we have that option available to us, if we, if needed, that would make sense. The only thing I wanted to ask Mike uh, is is there anything that we might need to do? in alternate two in terms of line extensions or anything else where having not being able to do it in alternate two is a problem for our system yeah that's so my original way way back when proposal was to use some of this orange area Mm -hmm. the very top right Mm -hmm. the, the top the furthest north and west kind of clouded area mike is what i'm pointing at um north and east uh, pardon me, correct, north and east. Um, and that was because I couldn't imagine us ever getting all the way up there developing anything. Yeah, slope. I do, and it's quite a boulder area according to what Dave was telling me. Like boulders the size of your house, boulders. Okay. So the only area that I think I can conceivably uh, picture us doing anything is this immediate area north of the H11, which is about another 10 acre, nice flat parcel. It looks like cleared this old yep. gravel pit. Yeah, they only have, I think, one section left of gravel to extract out of there, and the Act 250 permit will be expired. But if we want to do a stored energy project, that would kind of be my target area for either a battery field or a. So we got to stay out of there. Right, I want to keep that available for us. But so. going north, Go, but two is north of that. Yes. Yeah. So we'd have at least probably another 10 acres there to do another project with, which I would believe is plenty. Great. So it sounds like two is the way to go and that we can, we do have some space to expand and if we have to go over east of the vast trail a little bit. Yeah. And I, I, you know, I, this business about, you know, not putting in trail. I mean, we're not talking about snowmobile trails. We're talking about trails for people to walk and 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 right. and yeah. ski and and snowshoe and the, and the bike. The irony is profound having yeah. a snowmobile trail there, and that's right. that's yeah. not an issue. <laughs> yeah. So, um, Dave, would it be worth? Maybe you just hold off and don't do it, but if I know you're, you, don't, you like being out in the woods in this area anyway, would it be worth you doing a quick reconnaissance of alternate three and sort of saying, hey, Mike, uh, that's not buildable, yeah. You, you know, sort of like how much of it, where do you get, where do you say we'll never build trails there? Where's the line? You know, could you give like half of it the left side of it, because if the, if A and R comes back and says no, we only want the the previously mapped yellow shaded area. What's our response going to be? 
and it's all it's kind of all up to you in terms of assessing the land and saying it's a value to the trails or it's not a value. If it's not a value, it gives us more latitude. I think there's some land that that's, you know, we could easily trade, you know, that, that is not really developable, especially in that open area three. You see that stream that runs, yeah. that runs uh, kind of north south, mm -hmm. right here. Anything west yep. of that is pretty swampy. Yeah. So it would be anything up there from that would be we something we would like to leave open and available. So you want to stay east of that that stream that's Correct. running. Yeah. Through right. three. Right. That gives us a fair bit of space into yeah. three, yeah. In the, the if family. needed. Well, listening to that, Mike, um, you could you could you simply do a, a new alternate three that uses as its as its southeast boundary the, the the stream that Dave's referring to, and just bites off more acreage going continuing north along the vast trail. Um, yeah. So just reconfigure it. Um, yeah, but did, did but you say more acreage or the same acreage to start? Well, just yeah. because what you're doing is alternate three goes right, goes to the east of the stream where Dave's saying, "Hey, I kind of want to be able to use that." It, yeah. but but we I don't. Want the same acreage to start. I think to start with, I think we oh, want the yeah, same yeah, acreage. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't get master. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but as a as a as a as a backup, we could expand to. Right. Um, Sweetener, kind of. Up to up to the stream. Yeah. So it, it, the the interesting topography for trails is farther up slope too. Or, or, say that again. You're saying the interest, like the more interesting developable developable area, is up slope. Yes. Including yeah. boulders and stuff. <laughs> well, no, it's, <laughs> yeah, no, it's awesome. It gets a little rough back in. Oh yeah. yeah. So just a couple of points that we talked about that are part of the equation are um, you shared with me that the two, the little loop and the piece of the trail that are off limits in the winter right now are essentially never used in the winter at all by anybody ever. Oh, that's great. Rarely. There may be a snowshoer down there. I have not seen anybody down there. But if you put the sign up that they wanted that said, you know, skull and crossbones, you can't go here. You're not <laughs> going to have a whole legion of people coming and complaining. Well, and, if some, and if somebody goes yeah. snowshoeing there, I mean, we're, we're not going to be patrolling this. No, absolutely not. Biohazard. And the other thing Dear. was the, <laughs> they are I asked David hazard. about the uh, realistic development opportunities in the existing area, and I'll let you speak to that. Well, the, the existing the existing area that's One. that's we're talking about moving. Yeah. Yeah. What is the potential for there, development? There's some potential there. There's some, and, and there's some very interesting terrain. And I have I have reconnoitered it many a time and, and thought, you know, it would be fun to do. We just don't have the manpower right now to do anything further. And 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 you know, it would be nice to have that available to us because it is so contiguous with what we got now. Mm -hmm. So. It, it would, it's a no-brainer to, to keep that in our you know, portfolio there to, to develop a so, land. So moving up to two or three is better all around. Yeah. That would be awesome for us. Got it. So who, who I suppose sells A&R? Suppo yeah. Is it Mike's job or who, who talks to A&R? Uh, Mike and Eli will be yeah. doing that piece. Yeah. I, I guess the other thing, you know, if we can be candid in the best of all possible worlds, is, is we'd like to keep this to winter stuff. I mean, that's the other protection, is it, you know, dear winter in the winter, not in the summer. Uh, you know, and so if, if things could be used in the summer, I th I'm thinking back if A&R digs their heels in and says, we have to keep this area. It strikes me that one other option is to offer the, is, is not to give up part of the area in one, in the existing area. But, and maybe this is, again, this is a back pocket. It's not a preferred route. Um, but would be to um, add the additional area that we were talking about as an alternate, about lose, you know, adding and dropping, but just to add it, but to get the conditions changed so that there would be a prohibition on the winter use 
of the trails. What do you think but, of that, Mike? Sorry, were you asking me? Yes. What do you What do you um, think of that? Yeah, I think that I think that um, that's another option. Yeah, I think, and as a backup. Yeah. And, and Dave, from the trip from Hardwick Trails perspective, would that, in other words, you'd be giving up winter use of a couple of existing trails? Would we also uh, give up any? Building. Future development? No, uh, no, what I'm suggesting is that they get some extra land, and in exchange for that, you get back the summer. rights for, for development for use, in the for use in the summer, not in Most the winter. Of the summer. Yeah. Right. Winter, we don't, you know, that's just so far out there that we don't even bother trying to groom out there. So it really would be a summer place anyway. So that, if we would get the option to be able to develop that a little bit more for summer use, I think that would be awesome. Yeah, so I, I, you know, again, it just strikes me that that might be, for whatever reason, because I certainly can't get into A&R's head, uh, might be more palatable to them than going into a, a different area altogether. And, and then it's clear it's more deer wintering area in exchange for getting rid of the conditions. And the, the deer but I guess the question, let me, let me just, the question, Dave, for you is, which would you prefer, alternate two, with no conditions, that's so that's your pr preferred, um, and this would be this would be a fallback. So we have a fallback of additional land next to two, coming out of three yeah. a little bit, and we have the fallback of trading off conditions for some more land where the existing. That would is. be what I would be happiest with. Okay. So was A and R involved in this original selection of this area? Yes. And the problem is, is that, yeah, they, they just did it. Bureaucracy. So it sounds like I should work with Mike and others to get you these options defined further and follow up next month, or what would you like to do? The sooner the better, as far as I'm concerned, that we get this resolved. I'd be willing resolved. to get on the phone or have an impromptu meeting. Yeah, I mean, if, can... if you get a breakthrough, if you get to a deal. Oh, yeah, yeah, no we problem. Ought, but I, we I might want to gather it. I don't know, how much, Mike, how much time is it going to take you to kind of lay these three options out for us on a map? A day or a week or? I mean, it would be good. It would be good again to have right. I'd like to have Mike Here's option a. and and Please. and Dave or Eric or somebody from Trails in a room together because what we want to make sure is that whatever yeah. we go in doing actually works for you guys because there's no point in doing this if it if it doesn't. Whoops. <laughs> and and again, then to make sure that whatever we do um, doesn't create a problem for the electric department down the road. So did you hear my question, Mike? No, I didn't, sorry. Okay, so I asked what kind of uh, time you would have to commit to kind of laying out three maps of our three kind of in the works options here for us. Is that a day of work or a week of work or what? Um, did you say how much time would we need to turn that around? Yes. Yeah, um, just a few days. Okay, so if you could put something together and if I can connect you and myself and Dave Mitchell, maybe after the holiday and yeah. nail some of this down for the board, that, that's workable for you? Yeah, that sounds good. Okay. Because if that could all be done before our January meeting, yes. then we can then we can look at all and make a and make a decision as to how we want to proceed. How we, you know, what works for everybody, and uh, yeah. Well, really, I think a key, I think a key component, Mike, is going to be your feedback on how you or which options you think are going to be received the best. Yeah, that's going to be a key thing yeah. for us or for the board to decide. This is this is, this is a multi-factor optimization yeah. problem. <laughs> yes. So keep that piece in mind. Plant a bunch of oak and beech trees. Habitat enhancement. Okay. 
Okay, and does anyone have any other questions for, for, for Michael? Do we have any sense of how many deer actually end up in this area? I don't know. There are a hell of a lot in my fields, in my forest. But for all I know, my property is in deer wintering areas, so. Saving them too much. What do you think, Mike? Is it a pretty heavily populated deer area, or what did you find? Sorry, were you asking me if, if, if there's a lot of deer in those woods? Yeah, do you think it's a pretty heavily populated area, or what do you think? Um, I think it's uh, low to moderate. I know, you know, um, I mean, I've heard talk just from folks that hunt the land is that they're really further north up on um, the yeah. main property uh, when the going gets really tough in the winter. That's what I said. Um, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but, um, you know, it's a tricky one because a lot of it's really just based on structure and habitat. Right. And because the deer winter so, use the yards so inconsistently depending on the weather, um, it's, it's hard to assess. So yeah. I certainly, um, yeah, I'd say kind of low to mo moderate habitat, some of it. Um, even some of the stuff that's mapped, I think, is not deer wearing habitat. But um, the fact that a and R loves to stick with their maps, you just kind of got to live with it. I understand. So it's, a it's a complicated, um, it's a complicated question that you asked. Yeah. I, it was totally just a curiosity question. So. What was that? I said it was totally a curiosity question. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. Really appreciate yeah, it. You're welcome. Yeah. And so we'll get something together after the holidays. Something yeah, nice. I'll get us all connected. Yeah. Perfect. Can you Thanks. hang up on me? Okay. Thank you very Thanks. much, David. Thank you. Appreciate it. Hey, thank you, guys. Can we pass this down to you? I'm glad that we can be on the same day, finally. You know, I was going to let her. Yeah. Yeah. That would be great. Lost that communication there. Thank you very well. And as long as we're talking about hardwood trails, we do have an MOU where we should be having regular meetings at least once a year, if not twice I'm a year. To, um, that'd be great. Can I report out with you guys. So that I'm, would. I can show you all the maps and what we've done. And that would. Yeah. That what's your plan? Awesome. You know, Just what give are you me planning? A little, you know, heads up, and I, I can yeah. do it. Because, there. because yeah. that way, that way, it would help to avoid. The kind of problem that we have right now. I totally agree. Cool. So. Just let me know. I'll be glad to. I will give you one up. <laughs> Very good. Good to Thanks see you. Thanks so much. Right. Have a good holiday. Good to see you guys. Take care, all right? Bye bye. All right, later. Have a happy holiday, everybody. Thank you, you too. Okay, this takes us to the next item on the agenda, which is the delegation of authority. Um, which. I hope I reflected what uh, what had been discussed. Are are, the, are there any comments? But I think it's great. It was thought that we needed one addition under uh, delegated to general manager or any other employee of Harder Electric because no 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 absolutely okay. not. So uh, since. The reason I said that is just because uh, Beth is... Um, Beth will not have that authority on her own. Uh-uh. Yeah, she, she works for Mike. Okay. Oh, okay. We're happy to have you, Beth, but... Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. That's, 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 that's nothing personal. So, the only thing I wanted to bring to your attention on this was uh, number 11. Mm -hmm. Union labor contract, have no problem. Annual staff compensation, I just share that. Historically, we've always, uh, at least since I've been here, tried to stick with the same uh, increases as what the bargaining unit gets. Um, but I've also done some small bonuses in there, you know, $250, $500, and those are in the budget. I, I factor them into that. So I just bring that to your attention that annual staff compensation it, you're going to see that in the budget, right? No, so uh, that would constitute there. that could constitute but, but that the would, approval. But that would constitute the approval then. But, 
Ten four, but I, I just wanted you. That I was worried about that one, and I'm just throwing it yeah. on the table to say. Yeah, no, I think I think that's where it would it would it when it would come up would be in the budget. Okay. Um, Other than that, this is fine. And 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 I don't think we were particularly planning on changing anything from what we had been been doing. Uh, is there a motion then to approve this? I move to approve this. Is there a second? Second. Any further discussion? Um, hearing, uh, it, uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The motion carries unanimously. Uh, so, this is set up. What I would suggest is um, I can either do something and, and, and take off draft, I just didn't know, or mm -hmm. we can just cross it out and, and, and initial that, and then people can just sign one that's oh, what that one that's in here i'm happy i'm happy to not type something up again yep. sure. do you do you have a I an extra cup book around and then i'll have all that stuff. that's yeah. fine yeah. sign above your name please Your pen. Roger, can I use your sure. pen? I figure I shouldn't sign in pencil. Oh, and just cross it, you cross out draft. So, I think I think we now turn things over for the financial update over to Beth. Yes, sir. And I guess the first thing in our book was was the direct deposit, um, which Mike, you said you were going to bring sheets that people can. So I'm happy to do it now. Yeah, yeah, I gave mine. Yes, you need one. I'm good. Thanks. You gave me one. I don't think there's one in here. Oh, no, no, there isn't one. There, never mind. There is one. There is. Oh. Also, on Beth's, one of Beth's items of her uh, project she's working on, that was a two page. Double-sided document. I only give you the front. Page. Oh, okay. Page. That's called C Boss Six. Yep. I said, I've got yeah, you I've guys got already, didn't I? Okay. Thanks. <coughs> I need. So I took it out of the checkbook. Mm -hmm. Here we go. Okay, Beth. So yes. that. I think the next item that we have is, is what's listed as CBOS 2, which is, <laughs> and 3, I guess. They, I think the letters are identical, yeah. except for the dates. Well, 2 and 3 are the same document, but it's from the auditor's issuing management representation letter. There's one the audits from that they just did for the two thousand nine financial year. Yeah. And then CBOS 2 is the 2019 management representation letter, and CBOS 3 is the 2020 management representation letter. Yeah. Um, has this been reviewed by council? Because this one's even longer than some of the other ones that we've gotten in the past. To my knowledge, it has not. No. Um, I mean, I, again, I don't know. Did anybody else I read, read through this? I read through. I read through it, and there's nothing that caused me 
any concerns that seemed out of the ordinary. Well, but, but I want to know, Beth, when your experience, do you view it the same way? I agree. I went through both of them. Both basically, I did. So I'm sorry yep. about over here. They're trying to get them here for a week, and now they show up. Um, they are identical, and I did not see anything out of the ordinary for, on any of those items. Okay. I was, I was concerned about a number of things in here because I don't think they're things that, with that are within the board's purview or the board's knowledge. I, I realize that this says to the best of our knowledge and belief, but it's it, it, some of it, I mean, I don't know what, what gap requirements are in any meaningful way to be able to be saying that stuff meets gap and that comes up in one and two and in nine and in six. Um, I mean, that's what we rely on accountants to tell us, I think. I agree. Um, so, um, you know, that, that, that I thought was a little bit, um, I also thought that, that knowing the effects of all possible litigation is uh, rather overbroad. I don't know about anybody else, but you know. I trust you on this stuff. All so possible. You, have stuff you want us to run by Eli or others? I'm happy to do it. Yeah. So if that. You can give me a marked up one. I'll be happy to do that. I mean, I had questions on this, but I, I. But you're saying, Beth, that this looks like what everybody signs off on. But does everybody sign off on it? I mean, you're with us now, okay, and you know this stuff, but we haven't had mm -hmm. right. a financial person. Um, on staff before. Who, who prepares this? Who this is from the accountants. This is, we're writing to them. Yeah. We are. We are. We it's are. Really cool. this, is, this is called CYA for the accountants. Yeah, exactly what right. I'm used, what I'm accustomed to on a board finance committee is, is having to sign something like this um, and it's really an obligation to disclose. It's basically us affirming that we've disclosed everything that we're aware of. And that's what they're trying to, they're, they're trying to hold us accountable for full disclosure of everything we know we're disclosing. Mm -hmm. That's, I think that's the principle. Does that sound right, Beth? Yes, that is correct. So now, the, the specific wording, is there a gotcha in here somewhere? I, I'm not equipped to make that well, judgment. I'm not, you know, I'm not skillful enough to well, I think the, parse the Well, I think the gaps are gotchas because we don't know what the specific requirements of gap are. I think, you know, all pos again, I, <laughs> the lawyer in me, yeah. all possible litigation is like, mm -hmm. You know, if it's an all possible litigation that could have a material effect, or you know, that had, mm -hmm. that would be different. But but this says, all. Which, which number was that? Uh, it litigation. came up a couple of places actually. It came up, um, seventeen. Um, at least said whose effect should be considered when preparing financial statements, but nine says uh, the effect of have been accounted for and disclosed in accordance with GAP. I don't know what GAP requires. Mm -hmm. So it sounds to me like, and this is based on history with Brooke, when we had uh, the firm and Barry do our stuff for that one year, mm -hmm. and she and they got into quite a discussion about all this stuff. It sounds like I should have Brooke take a look at this for us. And at this point, another month really doesn't matter. So would you like me to do that? I mean, I guess the question is, do we go with Brooke or do we go with somebody at, um, at Eli's firm or? Either way. But Brooke has looked at this before. All right, she's fought this battle with another firm, so. Um, I mean, most of these I thought we could make, but there were a bunch that were question marks in my mind. Um, I was in the back from the city, making half as long. There's so much in here. They just prove everything. This, this is, I mean, no, it's, it's you know, it says the financial statements properly classify all funds and activities in accordance with GASB statement number 34 as amended and GASB statement number 84. Yeah. 
you know, and I know it says, you know, to the best of your knowledge, but m my knowledge is zip. Yeah. Yeah. In a corporation, you'd have someone who's on staff, who's a CPA, you'd have your, you'd have your people chief financial your, officer yeah, would say to your board finance committee, yes, 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 no. yes. They'd say, okay, we're relying on your expertise. And you probably and have some accountants on the finance committee. Yeah, they? that too. Yeah. <laughs> it's depending on the size of the boilerplate from them. Anyway, but but yeah. So yes, I think I think not a problem. Brooke should take a look at this, and you know, if she wants to give me a call, and I can give her. And Beth might have Beth. You might have some contacts who you've worked with over the years who might have a perspective on whether this is an overreach. Is there anything in here that's out of the normal, you know, course? I don't know. Um, I, I personally don't see anything out of the norm, but I do have some contacts that I could reach out to. Yeah, that might be good, because well, your contacts would be particularly knowledgeable. Well, it's also out of the norm for whom, because this was the accounting firm that prepared our financial statements. Mm -hmm. This is not a case where we gave them financial statements and they audited them. Good point. They prepared the financial statements for us. That is a difference. Yeah. yeah. This, That's a good point. <laughs> yeah. so. looks, I didn't think of that. This looks a lot more, uh, this is a lot longer than the, uh, the similar form that my CPA gives to me. Yeah. And if this were my business, I would have some, a lawyer look at it. Yeah, I'm trying to look at it. Yeah, I just wouldn't be comfortable. All right, I think we got a course action. Okay, yeah, I think. I don't think we need a motion on this. I think no we'll just, yeah. Which takes us to 4. Yeah, this yes. is the, this is the one that had the resolution that, that you get a chance to review, which right. is the seven. Well, there's some other problems with it though too. <laughs> um, I I think I think. Mike, you have to sign this. You have to cross out secretary and, and put general manager. You're not the secretary. Where is that? That's right at the front of this resolution where you say, I, Mike Sullivan, certify that I am. So you're the clerk. <laughs> oh, yeah, it is crossed out. Oh, okay. Because what I was looking at, it wasn't, it, that wasn't changed. And, and then the other problem that I had was the bank acknowledged that this was received on November 15th. And the resolutions yeah. are resolutions that we're passing at our December meeting. Um, yeah. So you can't make the certifications that, it, it, I mean, it's, 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 it's not a good document. <laughs> Uh, question for you, if it's okay with the, like, um, we had to change some other pieces on this document, the bank said just uh, put in the correct information and initial it, would, if they're okay on that date, just us altering the date and initialing it? If, if, okay they, if they are okay with doing that, that's fine, but I mean it has to okay. be done and I wouldn't, I would make sure that it's done before Mike signs it. I mean, you're going to have signed it, you know, if you're not here, it's going to be signed earlier, but Mike's going to conceivably take it over to the bank and make sure that it's, that that date is, is crossed out and, an, and the correct date, something after this meeting is, is yes. put in. The, the other thing is the effect of, on previous resolutions, that should be crossed out and, and initialed because we don't have any previous resolutions on this. Um, and because I mean, we, we've never seen this form, and I, I, again, I'm still thoroughly puzzled by this because I, I, uh, I'm a board member of, of another organization that uses Union Bank um, and have been involved with the bank accounts for that organization, and um, we've never used this form. Um, the other thing, the ones, the account agreement forms are the ones we've used, but on the second page, on page two of two, uh, this is on Beth's form, 
on the non-individual owner information. It has um, Jess's email is the email. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. and good, good I don't know, you. and I don't know whose phone number that is, but it should be the five two zero one. That's another one of the lines in the office. Okay, but it should be it should be the five two zero one. I think. Um, uh, the number three says says funds on deposit, but it ends up being a specific account. What, so where, where are you? Where number are you? three on the, on the description of power. It says funds, North checks and funds on deposit. It's not specific, but then you know farther in the next document, the account agreement, it has a specific. So they potentially conflict. I mean, it doesn't say as as referenced in the account agreement. Because it's a broader it's a broader delegation. Right. It's not just right. the specific account. But uh, but there was a place where there. I thought there, I saw some place that actually listed the accounts. Yeah, it's correct with all the email messages. Yeah. You need check in account numbers. So yeah. Uh, yeah. It has the same one. And then number six doesn't really apply on the, on the description of well, that the first, this first document. Because it ends up referring to other instruments rather than. Where where are you? What what, what page are you number, on? Number six right here. Yeah. Are you yeah. talking in the resolution? Resolution, yeah. Associate acknowledges the financial fairness. Added, added automated access devices to facilitate the term includes credit cards, automated teller machines, and debit cards. Yeah, it does supply. Okay, well it does apply except that the the description of power is endorsed checks and orders. It's not you know, it, or, or, or otherwise withdraw or transfer funds on deposit with this financial institution. That's what you're doing with those cards. Okay. Right. I think that's what you're doing. <laughs> I can't imagine what else you're doing with them. Um, Poker game. Um, All right, so I got four mods on the first one. The email and phone number on the second one. Any others? Not that I spotted, but. Is there a limit? This is endorsed checks and orders for payment. It's, it's an open amount? It's an, it's an open amount. It's yeah. part because this is, you know, we're paying VEPSA, we're paying right. purchase power. There are big amounts in yeah. there. Yeah. And then any, anything we put out, any payment we make in excess of 5000 both Beth and I have to sign. Now that was so something sure in here, here. It, said, it said something about a single signature. A single signature. Do we want to amend that with... Where was it? It did say single signature. Yeah, it was on the second page, uh, top right. Yeah, it says one, and then uh, indicate number of signatures. Got, yeah, you initial the. Do you want to write in there three, one? Is that the number three y'all were referring to? Yes. Of description of power. Yes. This is on page two of three. Yeah, uh, and it's on uh, number three. Uh, the the bank. The, what they explained to me was the bank only requires one. Right. And since this is their document, they say one, but for AGD internal purposes, uh -huh. That's well, well, but but if we, but 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 hang on, hang on a second. If we require two signatures and the bank only requires one, and somebody and a, and there's a check with one signature, the bank's going to honor it. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, well, the bank needs to not honor it. Well, so how do we? Two, the threshold. Well, yes, the, 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 bank, two, the fact that that question is even there means that it is an issue, that it is a variable. So the, for the bank to ask the question, we should be able to specify how many. So, so that needs to be changed. I think what where it says doing? indicate number, it's one for amounts for five thousand dollars or less. Right. And and two for more than five thousand dollars, or or it's or if it's less than five thousand, it's one, and it's two for five thousand or more. Yeah. Got it. That's good. Because other otherwise, the bank will honor anything with one signature. One. I mean, they may anyway, but but we'd have recourse if it was right. if it was a problem. 
Okay. Okay. So, which takes us to CBOS five. Did you hear that, Beth? I didn't hear that last comment. We're now on CBOS five. Gotcha. These are some things that y'all had asked me to uh, list out some changes and process improvements that I've made. This is the list. Okay. Um, if you want, I can go through them individually or if you're comfortable with them as they are. Uh, I was I was curious on the accounts payable process what the process had been. Yeah, why before. don't you go through them all? Okay. Uh, like you, I got the first page. Let me get over here and get to the, all the the second page as well. My major documents here. Uh, accounts payable. So what happens is when uh, first of all they had been paying the. Uh, the deficit bill, when it came in, we were spreading it out over four future, that four future AP processes. We are now going to pay that as one lump sum when it comes in, which is a typical uh, business process that uh, I've seen followed in most places where I have been associated with. So it will now just be paid all, the, all at one time. It will not affect the. Go ahead. No, I just wanted to share that that originates from back when the embezzlement was discovered and Heart of Electric was so far in the arrears with uh -huh. BEPSA. The board at BEPSA instituted a policy that Heart of Electric had to pay weekly so that uh, it didn't okay. fall behind again. Okay. But that's behind us and the C CFO there approved us to just pay monthly. Okay. Go ahead, Beth, sorry. That's all right. Uh, the second thing is, is our AP process. We have this specific process in place now whereby uh, when the invoice is physically, we've got multiple hands touching it. Um, so when the invoice is physically received, it is open by one person and she stamps it to make sure it has been received. She then passes it along, uh, I'm sorry, she receives it and codes it. A second person in the back office then actually posts the invoice to be paid in the software program. That invoice is then electronically approved by Mike. Okay. Then uh, there's a check calculation that's done before any checks are printed. Um, and the check calculation will not run on any invoices that Mike has not approved or has not gone through the first few steps. Good. You're, you're fading, Beth. We're losing you. I'm sorry. Um, so, uh, okay, so the check calculation report is run. There will not be a check even calculated if it, if it has not gone through the first three steps, the coding and the approval. So then after the calculation is done, the checks are printed. Once the checks are printed, the employee matches the check to the invoice to make sure they do match. Then there will be an electronic signature on the check, which is my signature, and if it's over 5,000, then Mike manually signs it. So the gaps that you closed with this were what? We now know, we now have a, first of all, this all was, I ran all this by the auditor to make sure he felt the internal controls were in place, and he did. So what we're looking at is making sure that the person who codes the invoice and puts it in the system is not the same person who runs the checks. The person who approves it is not the person who actually prints up the checks. Um, my signature that's on the check is I, I don't approve the invoices, I don't code them. I see the checks and I can also have the ability to verify that there is an invoice for that check. Good. Is so there's several internal controls in place in here now. So is that, is that part of, that was one thing I wondered, was, was that part of the process that, that, that the invoice before the check is signed, it, the the person signing the check has, has verified. Yes, when 
when they do the check calculation, that's when we're verifying there is an invoice that goes with that check before the check is ever printed. Okay. Right, but I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about possibilities for mischief. And if the person, if the person who's doing that check calculation and matching the invoice to the check says that it matches, and, and there's something fraudulent in it, and if the person signing the check hasn't checked against the invoice. The person doesn't do the calculation, the software does. I, I understand. Okay. I understand. Well, I understand that. I'm trying to follow you as well. Um, the person, okay, say that one more time, make sure I understand. That the per it seems to me that it would, it, if, from from a standpoint of avoiding any possibility of mischief, that the person signing the check would <coughs> verify it. It would, it would be a second verification against the invoice before it's signed. It's in other words, it's not just a bunch of checks that come in on a pile that are that are signed without checking them against the in, you know, so that there's a matching invoice. So when the check calculation is actually done, mm -hmm. that is a step that I am working on to make sure I get it right with uh, the person producing the check that me, who has the signature on the check, when she actually runs the check calculation process, that's when I would step in as a second person to make sure that there's an invoice going with that check that's going to be printed. Because part of that check calculation process means these are the checks we're going to print. No more. No more what? No more, no less. I don't know why I'm getting some back thing, but no more, no less. These are the checks that are fixed to be printed, and me as the check signer, that's when I can go in and check to make sure there is an invoice for each of those checks. Okay, so you are you are checking. That was what I was asking. Yes. Okay. Yes, that was okay. that. That was all. That was all I was asking. And when they all come into the system, the first layer of approval comes through me. Right. No, I understand so I that. I process it, then it goes back through all the other channels, yes. and then it comes back to me again. So. Okay. Yes. It's ba it's like a relay scheme. There's circles overlapping circles. That's that that's good. Yeah. That's 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 really good. The conspiracy would have to be wider. Yes. Absolutely. <laughs> So the next thing is the monthly reconciliation of AP in the bank statement. Um, I've got it switching so that the person who does AP in a particular month, a second different person will be actually reconciling the bank statement. And then the following month they will flip flop. Yeah, Which is great for controls and yeah. for our business continuity and resiliency yeah. getting people yeah. cross trained. So, so now we get to the payroll process, and I mentioned this last month, but I'll reiterate that um, none, none of the payroll is on spreadsheets anymore. Everything is done in the software. Which eliminated so, which eliminated how many hours of nightmare a month? Back? <laughs> spreadsheets. Um, probably several, especially when it's done every pay period. Yeah. They were updating a spreadsheet. Uh, so I actually take time cards of the uh, office staff, I review them, I approve them, and each person also electronically posts their time. What is so you? As part of, in the, in the um, you get a so as part of the reconciliation in my review is I make sure the time cards match what they posted in the computer system. What is UPN? UPN is our SEDC software uh, CIS system. Okay. Yeah. What does and UPN the, actually stand for, though, Beth? Utility Power Net. There you go. Uh, and I'm the one uh, supervising the office staff, their time cards and their review. Uh, the working foreman is the one who checks the time for the crews. He checks their time sheets. He verifies that the timesheets matches what's in UPN, what they've electronically posted. So I'm doing the inside folks, and he's doing the outside folks. So how, how, um, it, 
I'm sorry? Just a question of process. How do the time cards, are those like manual punch time cards? It's, and then, so how does it, what? Uh, the, and then how does that differ from electronically posted? For the office staff, is it, it is an electronic time card that they punch when they come in. Okay, and, all right, all right. Okay. So it's part of the, it's the same thing. It's yes, it's all okay. part of the same system. Uh, so once all the time has been approved, the payroll administrator, this is the person who, um, I use that term because in the software system, that's what it's called, the payroll administrator. Um, they actually post and approve Mike's electronic time. Then the payroll administrator reviews and makes final approval of all electronic time. So what this means is there's stop gaps that even our software system has. That the first of all the employee inputs their own time, then their immediate supervisor reviews it, compares it to their time cards, and has to approve it or deny it. Then there's a third step that the actual payroll administrator also has to approve it. So it's a three-step process that three people are looking at this. Once the payroll administrator reviews and approves electronically all the time, then they run the payroll checks. And then the payroll checks have an electronic signature. Mike's signature is on the checks. And we now have made a payroll direct deposit available to all employees, and I think half of them are now using it. And what was the main um, gap you were trying to close in that process that you identified? The gaps I saw were, I mean, it, was, it was a process of making sure that appropriate people had reviewed the appropriate documentation that, I mean, like, the office person is reviewing the office staff. The person who knows and the supervising those people are the ones reviewing their time, reviewing their time cards, making sure their time is posted correctly in the system. And we're getting the three-step approval process in there. So the gap, one of the gaps there from, in my mind is that I was processing and approving office staff time, but I wasn't going into the system and doing that. I was approving it on the paper. Well, now she's put steps in place that it's again, it's those it, double circles. So, so um, yeah, no, that, that's great. I, I, I wondered, but I would, I would have guessed that, that, that Beth, you and Mike, because you're salaried and exempt, that, that you don't, you're not doing time cards. It's, right. I mean, it, it's the same every month. But as far as automating and getting away from all the spreadsheets and getting things okay. into the system, that's, those are all items yeah. that she's accomplished. Great. Great, thank you. Okay, I'm working. Okay. Awesome. So, the, what is CSR? Just these acronyms. What is CSR? Customer service rep. Customer service what? Rep. 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 Ah, okay. So that's that's if somebody comes in and wants to pay their bill in cash. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. That's a good idea keeping them separate. Yeah. You're confusing. Yeah, what they used to do is the ladies needed to go get stamps for the office. They would take it out of grab twenty bucks and then throw a receipt in after and that's it. No, no, no. Yeah, no, 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 no. That's <laughs> yeah, the, penny, the penny cash was mixed in with all the cash drawer. I mean, I've, 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 I've seen that. Be separate. Yeah, that's. Uh, so we keep it separately. Uh, Any time money's taken out, we bring back receipts so that we can properly account for all the money that comes in and out of petty cash. Great. Uh, cash over and short. This is the sheet I oh, gave you. Okay. Yeah. The second sheet. Yeah. There you go. So, in, uh, this is a common practice that I've seen in my, uh, in my experience. If there's ever any cash over and short, and usually it's very small amounts, whether it's the cash register at the end of the day, or whether it's reconciling the bank statement at the end of the month, usually it's less than $10. But 
it needs to be noted. We don't need to just carry it over, keep carrying it over and hope that it reconciles itself. Or we don't need to give a little slush bump. Let's, let's balance to the penny every day. And then, uh, so even the monthly bank statements, reconciliations, if they're out of balance, they're going to go in over and short. If it's that way, we can track exactly where we're over, where we're short. And when it's a significant amount, we absolutely must get in there and figure out where this is. Great. So we record it daily. Uh, we record and the over short balance, and we're reviewing it monthly. And then at the end of the year, as long as it's a, a, a de minimis amount, it will probably be just expense. Um, but it does need to be tracked on a regular basis. Yeah, yeah. So this wasn't being done at all? It was not being done. Oh, Lord. Does one person do the uh, um, uh, daily reconciliation? The uh, one person is doing the daily reconciliation. A different person is doing the monthly bank statement reconciliation. We keep those separate. So you just you do an in out on the on the on the cash drawer, you know, at, at the end of the day, every day. Right. Yeah, that's right. And presu right. presumably, when there's a certain amount, uh, you know, the, do you do a daily drop to the bank, or or you or you? Yes. Oh, that's a. Sorry, <laughs> I didn't I didn't read these in advance because we just got them so. <laughs> Register uh, the, the cash that comes in. Is that deposited every day, or is that every week, or when the spirit? Every day. Every day. Well, the cash from a particular day we put in uh, the 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 uh, or um, the safe. The safe. I'm sorry. That's all right. <laughs> Yeah. But what I mean, what is a daily deposit, cash deposit, for example? It depends on the day and the you know the month, oh, the yeah. month where you are in the month. It's just yeah. kind of a, a I mean, is it ten dollars? Is it ten thousand? No, it's thousands of dollars. Okay, it, it, so it's it's real money. Oh yeah, yeah. and that, that was yes. back in the day. They were carrying like five and six thousand dollars in there, and I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> Three hundred bucks in here is the limit, yeah. so that's that's why we have all these bonds. Yeah, it goes to the bank for the next day. Okay, good. Um, any other questions on cash register? Nope. Onward. Okay. Inventory. We just did that. Not much change. Very simple though. She was keeping her she There was a separate spreadsheet. Reconciling inventory numbers, the system, the operating system we have will do all of that, and we just finished inventory, and we let the system do it all. And rocked it. Right. Uh, yeah, we read that in your report. Man, that was awesome. awesome. That's really good. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, maintenance of customer accounts. This is what is affecting the front office. After all billing is done, in any and every month, I will run a query that will verify all accounts have been 
been there before that month. Um, every once in a while, and you may ask, why would someone not be in the regular cycle? Uh, if we have to move, for instance, this uh, we recently moved some seasonal customers didn't qualify to be seasonal anymore, so we moved them to monthly cycles. So we need to make sure any time we move someone's cycle, they, they do get a bill. Um, I do bring with me the capability to look in the back side of the system and run queries that are not readily available as what we call standard batch programs. So that is something I have brought to the table that I will be doing every month to make sure we get every account filled. I will also be able to run queries to verify that accounts are on the correct rate in class. For instance, when they change from seasonal to monthly or vice versa, their rate does change. So I have to make sure that they are feeling on them really great. I am working on setting up a scheduling system to plan for on-time performance of everything that happens to an account from the day it's read all the way through the system. It's billed when it's due, when we run uh, late, when we send late notices, what the actual disconnect dates are. So it's a uh, scheduling system that the, point, the goal is that we don't have to remember, oh, we built this account 30 days ago, we've got to remember to run, you know, the link with notices on such and such a day and we figure out when we can disconnect based on Vermont regulations. So I'm trying to put it all in one spot so that we can easily recognize and see, okay, today, what's due on these routes? What's going to be done today? So and we're working with it. Does that uh, show up in a daily report or you do a special query every day? No, this is, this is not a, you understood your question correctly. This is a, I say a spreadsheet. Um, and the ultimate goal is the UPN software will handle schedules. But until we all have a clear understanding of exactly what those schedules are, we need to make sure we see it in front of us to say, yes, that is correct. Then we can start including it into the billing, into the software system, and let the software system do it. So I'll just chime in here. This The first uh, item she had under this category, <clears throat> I had spoken to one of the staff and, and we had identified that there was some seasonal customers that needed to be moved to regular rates. And the message I gave was not clear in how that needed to proceed. They got put into this holding area, I'll call it, and were forgotten about. And she found them and said, whoa, why aren't these being built? Well, because Mike didn't communicate the right clear message so she dug them out and got that all straightened out. But those are the kind of things she's finding and is capable of finding that we wouldn't have yeah. previously. Will part of this system <coughs> be running a periodic check on bills for, shall we say, reasonableness? <laughs> that, that, that there aren't significant deviations from usage patterns from, for, for a Did particular... Did you hear that, Beth? Yes, and that's actually the, in the next paragraph. I think if I don't address it, let me know. But let me yep. go to the next paragraph. Pre-billing procedures to verify all accounts are reviewed. Again, pre-billing. They're all, they're all reviewed by at least two people in the office. And I am at least one of those two people. I include supervised review of all accounts. This means the office is looking at these accounts before we bill them, and I'm looking at them as well. For, to make to make sure they're reasonable, to make sure they look verified, verifiable, and accurate. Um, and so at least one person in the office, and I'm also looking at every bill before it goes out. And Beth understands energy and power enough that she would have seen our. Yeah, no, that's 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 great. But how do you look at? I mean, we we do four thousand some bills a month. Is this, is this an auto, I mean, is there, in the system, is there some kind of a, of a flag that will flag? Yes. This is the out. yellow flag yes. Lynn is asking about. The big yellow blinking <laughs> page. There's actually several flags that the system can look for. Okay. Um, so we pull out those accounts definitely to verify they are correct, but I'm also looking at every bill. 
to make sure it looks viable. Well, can, can you set the threshold on the flag? Like, for example, it deviates 10% or it deviates 50% on a monthly basis? Uh, there are some so. automatic flags that look at 50%. We can, uh, we can set some parameters to narrow that down. Did you say 50 or 15? 50, she said. Five zero. Yeah, that's 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 but too big. It also looks at the uh, other considerations are deviation from not just the prior month, but the same month from last year. So there's about okay. twenty okay. That's deviations the that it can look for already. Uh, if we need to customize and add some more, there is some leeway to do that. But when it's looking at last year, for example, is that also a fifty percent? Or is that a higher threshold? Yes. Yeah, 50%, 50 is. The standard is 50%. But yeah. you know, what can we change it to? You can specify the percentage you want to change it to. No, I mean, it's a okay. field. So, uh, so, what about, for example, there's no reference for the, because it's the first bill. And so there's no previous reference, but the first bill is so far off. But the, that it remains consistent. But that's but that's part of the check that Beth is doing because she understands the manual check. What yeah, what right. what but, kind of a customer it is and what right. range the usage ought to but, be in for that kind of a customer. I, I guess with forty five hundred bills, though, it seems like. Uh, but it's not forty five hundred new customers every month. Okay, so we're talking about. Yeah, I'm look, and I'm not looking at. And I'm not looking at 4,500 a day. As soon as those routes get read, it may be another week before they get billed, but as soon as the routes get read, we start looking at them. So it's not as if we have often get 4,500 or more, even 2,500 accounts to look at. It may, they're usually broken up in anywhere from 50 to uh, 100, 125 meters at a time. That when you break it up in pieces, it's much easier to slow down and look at them individually. Right, no, that's great. And the the one, and, you know, this is this is such a unique situation, but it's a hole that could be plugged by, for example, having uh, what, what are the characteristics of, of that? It's a brand new account. Um, it's a potentially large account, uh, or and if you can set like a reference number, for example, I don't know if you can do that, but. Uh, I, you see I, what I'm saying? Yeah, I, I think you do. Any new commercial industrial customer, Mike's you have to look at the first three months carefully. Yeah. And, and I would, I would think, Mike, you would be looking okay. at those. I knew the installs, the program, and everything. Yeah. Because so that's that's so specific about what equipment is there, and it, yeah. it, it, it there's not any kind of cookie cutter that you right. can stick on it. And, and the number of new accounts. Like the what's a, what's an average month for the number of new accounts? You fire up. Of new accounts? Yeah. I would say we probably lose six or eight a month, and we probably gain eight or ten a month. Okay, so, so it's managed. It's always picking, yeah, yeah. you know, they're always picking one up here and there. Yeah. And those are usually residential scale. Yeah, vastly large. residential. We're, yeah. We are by far and away a residential customer base. Mm -hmm. Sorry, Beth. Go ahead, Beth. Last, last uh, paragraph on that. All activity on account will be required to review and maintenance by the office staff will be done using a service order. And what, what I have found is that there were lots of notes being written saying, go check this reading, go check. It's just all little scratches and pieces of paper. <laughs> and we had no, no way of tracking after the fact. Oh, we sent someone to get this. We hadn't got it back yet. Or once it gets back, well, what was the result of that? So now I have, it, I have made the front office. Anytime we're doing anything on an account outside of a regular meter reading, if it's we're rechecking the reading, if we're going to check a, um, a wire or whatever it is, put it in, put it as a service order in our software. And that will be able to track any activity that we've done on that account as long as, and it will also enable us to put a date required 
so that in the mornings we can run a system generator report that says what service orders are due today. So they're not going to get right. forgotten. So we, we know right. which service orders out there are waiting on us, and we know what the activity is on them. And even after the service orders are completed and closed, we have a record of what we did out there. Awesome. So how much of the, uh, the information that they input for the, the, the service order or whatever the maintenance is on the account, how much of that is drop-down menu select and how much of it is notes that they actually type in? Okay. What, what will be on it is no less than the name on the account, the service address, the meter, meter number, the location number, um, anything about that meter information that we have phase or whatever, but it will give that the person handling that service order everything they should know about that location. Okay. It that will also auto have auto fills onto the yeah. service order. So, so they're not putting yes. in the, and then, the actual hand notes are like check boxes and a comment at the bottom. Everything okay. else is auto filled. Oh, that's correct. Well, the reason I ask that is because once people start writing things in notes, uh, well, I'm sure you're familiar with this, but it requires like a standardization of, of note writing. And yeah, it just sounds like that's not an issue. Now, like the only kind of notes that would be on there are special messages for the servicemen. Uh, servicemen, like it may say something like tree down, check, check, a, check a line down, or check a tree maybe affecting this line. Uh, things like that, but the basic information that they need to know about that location is pre-printed. Right. Uh, you, you left your lunch in, in the office. <laughs> well, <laughs> <laughs> but I, I am all about using the software as much as possible and not having handwritten notes uh, sitting around that might get lost or misplaced. Uh, well, and so far, I'm getting a really good uh, feedback from the customer service reps in the front office that they like these, these uh, it, like these things. And yeah, it takes a little bit longer to go in and create a service order, but on the back side, you've got all the information that you need. That's great. That's awesome. That's well, Beth, you you've done a tremendous amount in a short time. Really, Mike said you were going to be a superstar, just what he needed. So. <laughs> we can all see it now. It's really great. It sounds like we're entering the 21st century. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, there's one last thing, just establishment of job responsibilities. So what I have created for the front office and the back office, what um, after talking with them and getting their feedback, what I believe their job duties are, and trying to come up with some type of form formal job responsibility and I hope to eventually get actual job descriptions but it will absolutely incorporate things that Mike has discussed with y'all discussed with me as far as um, we got to have backups for everybody. Yes, we can't have one person responsible for everything. So, would you so have I want to get some formal things in one writing for their jobs. That's great. Uh, just to what you were saying there regarding the cross-training. So in the language of the job description, it would have, for example, in any other duties or something? Yeah. As a sign. Yes. I, I will make sure there's language in there for that. Um, the okay. Great. So, so we'll, we'll, we'll be, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Beth. No, I was just going to say if there are any other questions as far as these uh, changes that I've made. The only, it, this is a, not specific to the specific, it sound, it's like there's going to be a lot of increased usage of the software that we're using. And my question is, will we be able to have more up-to-date financial reports as a result of any of this? <laughs> so, that we, that. Right. so that we don't have a lag of two months. Yeah. That's an easy one, Beth. You can answer that. Print report. <laughs> The limiting fact, the limiting, the limiter on that is waiting for VEPS's data. We can give yes. you our stuff, but it won't have See, the like, right, power, right now, sixty percent of everything. Right now, even for November reports, we don't even have the VEPS of power in yes. November yet. 
Well, Mike's on their board. He can agitate a little bit there. Now, now that you're getting will probably have it by the end of this yeah. week. But yeah. But you well, could, well, you that, push that raises on. an interesting question. If we shifted our meeting yeah. to the fourth Monday from the third mm -hmm. Monday, would we be able to get more up-to-date report? You know, in other words, get com would we be able to get November reports so at our December meeting? Keep pushing this. I think that's speedier. a possibility. That's a great idea because it does feel. It always feels really bizarre talking about such a long ago period. So the discussion, Beth, is the limiting factor on us processing our stuff sooner has always been the fact that we're waiting on BEPS's data. And Lynn just questioned whether or not if we, because we usually get it right after this meeting, which by the end of, maybe not this week, but because of the holiday. But normally within that week following our regular meeting, I get that next spreadsheet. So. Lynn was asking, well, if we delay our meetings and move them to the fourth Monday, could we improve our data by a month? And I, th I think we can. So I'm going to look into that. I think so. Is that, uh, is that because of ISO settlements? That it's yeah, because yeah. ISO is kind of daily settlements. So uh, are they going yeah, to Yeah, they settle everything, but by the time. But you're talking about a month end report coming right. from them. Right. And, well, if, right. if we're thinking about that, people should check their calendars yeah. and see if that works and, and for... Yeah, nothing better or worse for me. You know, yeah, I mean, I have mind. something on the first Monday of the month, but, but I think the fourth Monday of the month is okay. Well, let's see. First, we need them. Yeah, first, let me get yeah. the work. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't, but and it just... Push a month and you say, push a week and you save a month. Yeah, that'd be good. Because we're looking at October here. Right. Of... <laughs> okay. So we go to CBOS 6. All right. Did anybody have any questions? Now getting into the financials that John usually see each month. Right. Yeah, I have a question for you, and, and you, you're fine just telling me it's somewhere else in here, and I'm just being stupid, but... Could you put, um, where you put the billings for a month, which is, you know, revenue dollars, could you insert in there the kilowatt hours that we build? You know, the energy we build, just so we have a sense right off the top of, uh, that, you know, that's, that's our product. That's good. And, and usually in businesses, we like to see some measure of volume, you know, whether it's the hours you build or, so it's down, Kilowatt but that's your purchase. Right yeah. Which which one? What we purchased from Bepsa is shown. Yeah, yeah, what I was looking for is kind of the the net that we. But if you did, what ties to the revenue? Now? Right, but if you that take if you build. take the the kilowatt hours purchased from uh -huh. Bepsa and the hydro generation, they add that's, up together. That's, that's the kilowatt hours. Yeah. Great. So just in, in round So numbers. all we got to do is total them. Yeah. Well, it's going to be those numbers minus system losses. Okay. And the losses, yes. but, but the losses are, I mean, they, they vary. All right, let me put it a different way. In your billing system, you know how many kilowatt hours you build. Why don't you just pull that number? And that's net of losses, obviously. And, and so, yes. Yeah. Regardless of where it came from. Yeah. Yeah. Is there <clears throat> one thing I'm curious about? If you be able this is a separate line item, but... Uh, I'd uh, like to know how many, how many net metering credits expire on a monthly basis. So that I guess I'm, what I'm, the reason I'm asking is because it, it reflects a certain amount of savings on the part of uh, hardware electric. You know, because there, there's some. Yeah, I, 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 would you be able to pull that? Expired net ah. meter. So yeah. like your expiring net metered credits. Yeah, if I, if I had it next month, for example. I, I can tell you that uh, the expired, the number of expiring net metering credits on a monthly basis is essentially zero. Is that right? We have very few customers who don't use everything. <laughs> wow. Very few, like under 10. What, what, about, what about you? Now, unfortunately, I'm trying to get it closer and closer, but I, yeah, I burn through them all. Yeah. By the time I get to February, March, yeah. my... 
cupboards yeah, bare. So that was just stack them up and the they they go quick. Yeah. Yep. I'm just gonna turn the oven on and no, I'm kidding. No, I yeah. invite you over to charge your car or something. Yeah, yeah. I had a question about looking at these numbers the, on the October summary, and when I look at the kilowatt hours, mm -hmm. um, they look pretty flat to me between the budgeted and the actual year to date. Because it's, it's 31 million, give or take, when you add up the hydro and the, and the purchase power for both budget and actual. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I'm guessing the, the reason mm -hmm. that hydro is down is because the, hydro, the dam was yeah, shut down. down. <laughs> Um, but when I look at the amount billed, that's it's, exactly why I asked the question. It's substantially yeah. over. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And and there so there could be project billings. There could be things other than. But it's six hundred. Th it's six hundred thousand yeah, dollars. Yeah, yeah. It's 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 like mm -hmm. ten percent, more than ten percent. Yeah, I actually just initiated a discussion with Mr. Farman. With who? Steve oh, with Farman, yeah. the rates guy. At Mepsa, and we'll probably be getting a visit from him next month to talk about exactly about this because I'm asking him, yeah, where where is this all coming from? Right. So, but but this but this build is this has nothing to do with purchase power. This has to do that's correct with this with what this is that this is this just is our retail sold. rates. Yeah. Um, and it sort of implies that our we're we're, we're getting more per kilowatt hour. We're getting more, well, we can't, per, but, but we're but, not because our rates are fixed. Our right? rates are fixed. So that's well, why we could be, we could be getting more if we were becoming. We charge more for residential mm -hmm. customers. A than better for mix. Yeah. No, a worse mix. No. Yeah. Right. So if the mix was deteriorating, mm -hmm. you would expect average revenue to go up. Well, this would it would be yeah. reflective of average revenue, but but that's a huge. Yeah. So you're attacking it already from another year. way. What? Yeah. I'm sorry. It's been multiple months in a row doing yeah. this. So. Yeah. But but anyhow, that's that was that was that was Good. it. Just so let's illuminate it. Yeah, I mean, we absolutely. really need to understand it better. Okay, so you guys you guys are talking about these variances here. N no. No. On, on the We're page before this. that. Uh, top line. Yeah. Top line. Thanks. The top line. Oh yeah yeah yeah. Okay. We build yeah. six hundred thousand dollars more than what we had in budget year to date. But the kilowatt hours that we sold were virtually identical from for year to date budget to year to date actual. And the only thing I can think of is that we're much more heavily residential. Well a couple of things. Or a couple other things have contributed to that. Not, not that much. Yeah. Some of it is this cutover we did. We finally got rid of all the non-15 kV operating in the right. system. So when I got here, our system losses were 14.5%. Okay. Now we're down around 4.5%. But much better. But but that's been going on for. I mean, we've been do, you've been doing that for a number of years. Right. Now. But this is the, this this year is the first year yeah. where we've been all 15. Right. Years. But how much of our system? But you're right. Yeah. You're right. I'm I'm just saying here's yeah. a piece of it. Okay. Yeah. Um, our mishap with the metering is a piece of it. Okay. Uh, so you know, I'll dig up all those to yeah. discuss, but I really want Steve. It would be it would be good to see, yeah, it would be good to it. see a breakdown of, of, of what that is. Good. Uh, yeah, I, I so you see we're, we're all in the same place. Has metering issues that you can build. Correct. And and, and that and that we've got the revenue here. Yeah. Okay. Because this is a, this is a very summary. Okay. Anybody have anything else on this page before we turn to? No, we better not spend that long on every page, though. I'm, I'm not going to. Well, I do have. I do have questions. <laughs> I have a very quick question on the next bit. The payroll employee contributions was that the pension thing that that yes that got mis stuck in the wrong place? Okay. Oh, I don't know. Where are you, Beth? Are you on the corrections attention? that and it shows. Is she on the cash flow reconciliation page? Yes. Yeah. So what I found when I went back and looked at those three months, part of cash flow is the money, all the money going out for payroll taxes and payroll, all, all the things associated with payroll. 
But what was not accounted for in those cash flows is the money that we actually had received from, that we had deducted from employees' paychecks oh. to partially fund that stuff. Okay. So that was the major difference, that those uh, deductions that the employees contributed did not get accounted for. Okay. So that could be pension, that could be taxes. Oh, okay. Anything that the employees contributed to. Okay. Benefits, taxes, all their contributions. Yeah. Not going to okay. Cash Thank you. <clears throat> um, so when we look at the three year comparison, <clears throat> which is the next page. We have a big increase in other income in 2021 mm -hmm. over 2020 and 2019. Is that a good chunk of that, I'm assuming, is the settlement? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. And if you take the settlement out, then that amount is about the same as the other years. Yeah. And, but, but operating revenue is, again, much higher. So it's not just budget that we were higher on, we're a million higher on, yes. on, on, on revenue. All in, yeah. Yeah. On, on operating, no, on operating no, revenue. Just, yeah, yeah. Without the settlement. We're a million we five higher with the, se with the settlement. Mm -hmm. But just... Um, so pulling that apart and really understanding it is key as a foundation for going forward. Yeah. yeah. Is it a one-time thing? Is it a sustained thing? And then again, our expenses, and it look, are, are also much higher. Again, that's, nine. That's a dam, right? Well, the big the big piece mm -hmm. is, is purchase power. Right. Yeah, and that's that's from from the from the dam. But that's that's half of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, I mean, uh, the distribution maintenance. <laughs> but yeah, that was a big number. Distribution mm -hmm. maintenance isn't the dam. No. Is that was that that was that because of deferred Mike during during the height of COVID? No, I would say it was, that was the last primarily the last chunk of the cutover I was just talking okay. about. Yeah. Okay, yeah. okay, yeah. that was enormous number of transformers we purchased and installed. So okay, all right, that that largely explains that. So then, could that be then what's partly boosting the revenue because you build out a lot of stuff? You, you build out some no, of that work? No, no, that's, no, that's, that's, no it's, it's, it's just the, lo it's the losses. I mean, there is. But it's this. Yeah, but that's, that's, okay. what, the generation numbers that I was saying were yeah. pretty flat. That's what we took into the system. That's, that's a gross number, if you will. Mm -hmm. But we sell less than that mm -hmm. because there are line losses mm -hmm. and part of the system that was this ancient system mm -hmm. yep. had really high losses on it right. so we had to bring yep. in more yep. but but that should that should be that increased our cost our, our maintenance co costs reduce, this year right. but but it, it it should result in in purchasing fewer kilowatt hours, not more kilowatt hours. Right. And you're sure? Because I would have thought of some of that being rather than maintenance. I would have thought of it as capital expenditure. Oh, a lot of it went to capital. Yeah. But yeah. Some of the so time. it wouldn't be in here. It'd right. Be right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm, All right. The so um, oh, it's down to four percent. Which is system losses are about four and a half. Oh, that's. I mean, that's yeah, much, much better or it should be. Yeah, it's a really great story. All right, Lynn, keep us moving. Okay. I have to look for, does anybody have anything else in the financial statements? I did. The, the administration bump was filling in the staff at the office. Because when we were in the Sorry, staff, man, I didn't hear there's you. There's a jump in the administrative part. Yeah. Is that because we filled in the staff at the office before we were understaffed? Is there anything else in there? It's like a $150,000 number. Can you talk about administrative in general? Yeah. yeah. Staff, and then we also had the two audits from mm. uh, oh, yes. SEC. Okay. 
So Beth, it sounds like as we work on our budget for the coming year, there's a fair number of these kind of one-off things that, that you're not going to be able to use 2021 as a, as a jump off point in every area. You're going to have to really keep a keen eye toward what was unusual in 21. Correct. Yeah. And uh, I have a question on your typical. slide. Um, it's the one that gives all the detail on admin and general expense. And it's just got a boatload of, of um, accounts. Yes. And is, are you, are you um, sort of rejiggering and rethinking what goes in which account? Because there's so much noise in there. You know, there's certain accounts that are, that are up a lot. There was nothing budgeted, but there's a huge amount of actual on the, and then vice versa and some other ones. So it's just a really, it's just a noisy page. Yeah, I have not, I myself have not been uh, looking at those to apply them in any different historically than where they have been. Okay. Applied. So there's some, there's a whole bunch of sort of weird ups and downs. You know, when you get to the very bottom of the page, it doesn't add up to that much. So as long as you've got clarity, it would be nice going forward a year from now to not have that kind of noise, you know, of, oh, we budgeted nothing in that account, but we just spent six figures. Yeah, a couple of those yeah. were, if you remember, Chris, the auditor, had us. Oh, he said. Remember, he's like, yeah. nah, 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 this goes okay, that's here, it. Nah. So it wasn't Beth, it was predated. It was okay. 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 So, this, so this shouldn't bounce around like that next year. Correct. Yeah, it's just hard, you know, you want to blow your head off because yeah. you're looking. Try, and when it's hard to know what's in there. Yeah. Is, is this maybe, you know, I might be reading incorrectly, but let's see, under account 440, 440.03. Uh, hang on, hang on, let us get to, that we were on a different page. 440.03. Yep. How, how does that differ from 236.06 and 236.07? 440.03 440 and which was the others? 236.06 and 236.07. 236, where, where are you seeing 236? Uh, they're not the first. Let's see. I don't see 236 at all. Oh, yeah. Okay, here we go. Which account 232, what? Uh, 236.0. Oh, I see. Okay, you're on, you're on the assets. You're on the balance sheet? Yes. Yeah, that's on the balance sheet. 236. Okay, so. Okay, so. At, at 236, which are you talking about? 06 and 07. Oh, you jumped way those ahead are, of all yeah, the those are, yeah, you've jumped those are taxes. Yeah. Those are taxes that we collect from and pay for those to the EEC. Okay, okay. We, I need, we collect it from the great bear and pass it on. We don't Okay. Okay. We don't benefit from it, we just gather it and send it along. Right. If it's okay, I need to I need to back up and it's just page two of the balance sheet. The October twenty twenty one balance sheet. Go to the second page, halfway down is the cash accounts, and there it shows our checking account as a very high number, and the payroll bank account, which I don't understand, a, a, a similarly high negative number, and they net out to exactly what you'd expect in cash. You know, that's what I think we've been talking with Mike about. But I don't really understand why the payroll bank account shows up as 3.2 million negative. What, what, oh there it is, yeah. Because of the way the software works, it has to have its own unique bank account number, general ledger number. Yeah. And as long as money, as long as it sees money going out, it's gonna be a negative. But in actuality, we only have one bank account. Okay, but, okay, but, our payroll isn't 3.2 million. So what is it? Yeah. That's a big I'm sorry. What is our bank balance? 
No. No, on the balance sheet it shows negative 3.2 million. It says payroll bank account. Right. How could it be that large a number? What would generate yeah. that? What would generate a 3.2 million dollar number there? Purchase power. Uh, it's, it's probably bank, uh, payroll ever since we've been keeping track of the payroll bank account, which this is what he says, 2016. Uh, most. Uh, companies that I am familiar with do not, they have a separate payroll bank account. It's not unheard of that a single. But that would be all the transactions that have hit that account since, uh, at least since UPN has been around. I'm not sure how it was structured in the previous software package. Okay. Well, thank you. That explanation, that gives me a, an understanding of how it's generated. That's bizarre. It's not particularly. Um, sensible, but I mean, we can live with it if we have to, since now we understand it. Maybe it's worthwhile you sort of poking around and thinking, is it meaningful? You know, is it helpful to you and to us? I can live with it, but it's kind of a head scratcher. So, is it so what you're saying is it's just going to be ever growing? That's what you're saying. Yes. And then the, then the GE fund checking is going to be ever growing. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I don't know that it will be ever growing. It has to. I, it has to. It has to. It has to. Yeah, but that would mean that Jim, the other accounts are going to be ever growing as well. That would mean eventually they would be able to get a balance. Uh, well, that's the problem. Is we don't yeah. we don't have four point five million dollars in that checking. Mm -hmm. Account no, and obviously I circled that. And oh, said, but, oh, but over the course of the year, we could run four and a half million dollars through the checking sure, account. Right. Yeah, but this is the balance sheet. This is supposed I know, to be yeah. as, of as of October, right. of October it, 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 this, 2021. This makes no sense to so it, me as a okay. cash amount. Yeah. I so mean, Beth, I think if you would it. poke around this, the whole 131 group. Yeah, the 131 group. Is there is there is there a possible alternative way of doing this that wouldn't be so confusing. Yeah. Okay. I will do that. It, get, it gets to the right number. The total cash number is right, but boy, oh boy, your <laughs> eyes pop out of your head the, when you The pieces see of it don't make any yeah. sense. Uh, and under, under margins and equities, I don't know, uh, retained earnings being negative 8 million. What, 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 what line uh, do you want? Sorry, 20120. Next page. Did you hear that, Matt? It's so zero. Two, something under mm -hmm. margins and equities. Yeah, now we're at 20120, that group. 201, 215. It, <clears throat> so it looks like this is based on some new, the way it's been input after, because the previous retained earnings was zero. So there's some calculation going on for current retained earnings being negative 8 million. Yeah, they may have never it's used the It's not so much as negative as it is a credit balance, and that is a normal balance for a retained earnings account. Because um, it's in the... This is a debit, essentially. Yeah. yeah. So can you put that under a microscope for us for next month, too? Those three? Retained earnings? Yep. I uh, know, mar margins and equities, all, all three of them. And we are moving forward. I got one more question. Do you guys, let's go simple on this one. The, the pension liability that we carry of half a million bucks, it's 242.25. What form does, is that an unfunded liability that we have that, that just keeps rolling forward? Yes. So we need to just keep, we need to keep that in our consciousness. Yes. And that was okay. something that Chris talked about yes. on yeah. the audit. Yeah. So, uh, actually, so, so unfunded so liabilities are generally speaking bad <laughs> things to carry <laughs> for everybody. You know? That's the post office. But, but there's, no, there's no alternative, I don't think. I mean, we can look into that, but I... But, yeah, I mean, but I, I, I was more keeping it in our consciousness as we start to 
think about how we allocate capital and how we're yeah well no that's exactly we exactly yeah. you know should we be setting doing some kind of a should we be keep, keeping some of this cash that we have in a reserve that's earning some money or do a charge every year or, or something or yeah something is there, is there a, like capital liquidity percentage that you have to maintain for, for I don't that, know how it's calculated that? it's no. a good question no one believes that no it must be actual we're on the if Vemers were to yeah. default we're on the yeah uh, that's where we are right now yeah, yeah. it's a, it's a real obligation yeah. yeah all right okay thanks I just wanted to understand that. I promise not to ask any more questions, especially on these subsequent pages. Does anybody? Yeah, so my only, my only, my only thing about that is we would want to look, take a good look at the actual annual exposure, because I think that's yes. the full liability, that's right? All you know, yeah. That you, so right. what you actually paid on a monthly basis might fit right in our budget. You know, if we only had one retiree collecting a pension. I, I'm just saying there's a lot well, more than well, just that. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what necessarily happens. If Emerus were to go up, belly up, I don't know what our obligations would be to the people who aren't retired in terms of coming up with well, some these, alternative. This is what I'm wondering. What are the real... Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think it's probably a lot but more that, number than that. But that's, yeah. well, but unless we have to start funding some other pension and, and yeah. put the cash into something else. So that would that would be good to, yeah. to find out. Uh, Is the ongoing monthly exposure? We're getting there, Mike. We're okay. getting right up to your general manager's report. I think. If no one has, does anyone have anything before the general manager's report? Beth, thank you so much. This was yes, clear and great. Work. great. Well, there is one more thing I did want to mention that's slightly different. Y'all may or may not have noticed. There, after all the detailed account information, there is an accounts payable distribution listing. Prior to this, y'all have been, been provided each time we ran checks. This is the checks that were created. Mm -hmm. This is the same information, but it just gives it to you the whole month at one time, as opposed to four or five different separate reports that you had. Great. Great. But it is the checks that were produced for that month. Super. That, that's good to know. I didn't see anything. Nothing jumped out at me yeah. in the checks. Um, any questions on the uh, general manager's report or comments? I think we all share the comment that great, great job on the inventory and oh, uh, very proud of those guys. Yeah. Um, great job on the truck if you can get it, you, get it over get the market. Work it. it. I I had a question on the uh, pen stocks. Mm. Oh, yeah. You said we require a, a large sum of money. Yeah, you Can, knew you were going to provoke the question with that. <laughs> any, any range? Any per, I mean, obviously, but... I would guess seven figures. Seven figures, okay. Yeah, wow. Okay. Yeah. That is a large amount. That is definitely borrow. Yeah. And that is... I would, I would hope to um, modify the system now from the two pen stocks coming from the head gate system, the gatehouse, to one. So that would probably add some more to how we change the concrete and yeah, it won't be a small project at all. But given what you described about the condition, um, I guess what ran through my head when I was reading that is whether this is something we that we we don't wait for it to fail and then have to do it that we no no, no. That so I'm gonna I've napped with them I had the engineers there and they were doing the steel thickness testing on the tower <clears throat> and I'm gonna have them do that next shutdown I think I spoke to that in there and give us a report because it might be oh the flat sections down here at the bottom of the of the penstock layer are bad these ones up here on the hill are good I don't know so they'll be able to give us a report on that okay. good okay. We got uh, it. Message received. <laughs> yeah, I'm just getting on your radar. 
this slide has smaller diameter steel pipe in it. Well, I got actually a good story about it. We had, when I was a citizen, we had many hydro stations. One of them was up in West Boston. And the Penstock there had, I'm not exaggerating, patches on the patches on the patches of those patches. Mm -hmm. And the general manager decided, well, we're going to get this thing. It's a, uh, it's a sock, basically, that you put in the Penstock. You stuff it in there, you let the water come down, seals all the holes. Well, that worked great until a hunk of ice went down through there and ripped that liner. And it all sent it right into the station. Feet was wound into that rotor. <laughs> and we had to cut it out. It took like 12 of us over a month to cut it out with a pocket knife. There's no other no way to get it out. Oh, it was like a giant hunk of rubber. Yeah. So we're not going to do that, I can tell you that. <laughs> Wow. I was going to ask if the, uh, the guarantee, the bank guarantee, yep. line of credit, does that cost HED anything? Uh, I think there's a flat fee. It's nothing worth mentioning. Um, this is part of their municipal services of the Union Bank. And I just provided this as a follow up to okay. the discussion yeah. last month. I, I mean, an LC typically is, is about 1%. You know, and and so one percent on a million dollars is ten thousand dollars. It's just not a huge amount, but it's not chump change either. And that's not what this is. I don't believe it's ten thousand. This I'll isn't a normal letter, letter, letter of credit. Either. Well, it's it's actually it's a it's an on demand. Yeah, it's governed by UCP. Yeah. Um, but the whole purpose of it is what. If the bank fails, yeah, yeah, this is this, this is, is the, insurance. This is yeah, a, this is sta it's a standby. It's a standby. It's a it's a liqui it, it it's a liquidity instrument. And so, do they price it? But 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 these but these kind of LCs yeah. are typical. Yeah. No, because this the deals that I do. Yeah, we see these all the time. Yeah, and they're really that much money. Uh, because there'll be something where they you have to post a security yeah. thing, and so they'll. Yeah. And, so and, maybe the oh, follow-up. I, I mean, Mike I see is, ones that are bigger. Yeah, can you check what the annual cost yeah. to carry oh, this thing? Is um, the, the, I was curious about the issuer, um, which has an an, an A double A rating. So I mean, which is so they should be in pretty good shape. But the thing that jumped out at me is I was trying to see what their assets were. Mm -hmm. And in 2020, in mid 2020, their assets were like 60 some billion, and now they're 30 some billion. Really? Yeah. Wow. Um, which, which. Did they spin off? I, I, I didn't, I couldn't get it in, yeah. I didn't have time to get into a lot of detail to figure out what, what was going on, but it just kind of, it made me wonder, hmm. I mean, this is even a million versus 30 billion is still, you know, they ought to be able to cover it. Um, That's although, a question worth asking, though, for sure. It's not full faith and credit of the American taxpayer. No. <laughs> well, they're a co-op. They're part of a co-op. The the federal home loan banks are a co-op, and I'm guessing that Union Bank is probably a member, <coughs> which maybe may result in a lower fee. You know, maybe the members get a deal. But mm -hmm. but yeah, this seemed to me to be your pretty plain vanilla. Um, on-demand letter of credit, the the drawing um, certificate, you know, was basically pretty straight. You know, we we went to to to, to draw a half a million dollars, and the bank didn't honor it, and so here, now you pay us. Yeah. yeah. Well, the the I guess the question, if you have a balance of a million and a half, this is a, a million, at least five hundred. So for you remember Mike made the comment to he he took us through the arithmetic of right. disbursements that are pending right now. Okay. So by the time it's in place, yeah. it will match. Okay. Well, within the next probably six to eight weeks, it's going to line up. So it'll be like one and a quarter. Right. Okay. Right. So this nine plus the regular FDIC, uh, which is right. a quarter, gets us right there. Yeah. That's good. So that that took care of that. Just never know how crazy the world's going to get. <laughs> so, any other questions or comments on the manager's report? So, I'll give you a, 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 on uh, Eli's report there. He talked about the consumer complaint. Yeah. Uh, he did. 
Is this something we should do in executive no, session? No, I think this is all public record okay. with the PC and uh, with okay. the DPS. But uh, we tried to uh, come to an agreement to get this thing closed out. At, uh, what I believe is a very reasonable and generous agreement. So we're looking to, and the consumer wasn't hearing any of it. Hmm. So we've, uh, I asked Eli to reach out to the department to see if they would agree with that proposal mm -hmm. and if they would propose that to the PUC with us and get this thing closed out. So that's, that happened since Eli provided this last week. And, and how, again, I, that's why I wanted to go into executive session. I'm curious what we're talking about, that's all. There, yeah. or, 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 to, or is it substantial or it's not substantial? It's not substantial. It's not substantial. But I can call you wrong. No, then that's fine. That's fine. This is the trees, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So then we go to the power bill summary. Anyone have any questions about that? Oh, just a follow up also on Sean's presentation that he did for you last month. Yep. And our targets for um, 95 to 105. Um, so he and I went through the list of potential customers coming on as well as confirmed customers coming on. And I actually ended up having, having him boost our projections by 3%. Great. So I Great. think okay. we're going to be covered well Great. Uh, coming into this unknown arena first of the year. So. Yeah. Great. Okay. And so that's, that is, has us covered like two weeks from now. Yes. Oh, exactly. great. Good. Okay. Hopefully it's not. I think it will be. Is, it, is there a chance we could have uh, a presentation on grid transition? Uh, you know, like just all the stuff that's coming down, the Vermont Climate uh, climate Action Plan, uh, the comprehensive, uh, uh, what's what it called, CP, Comprehensive Power Plan. Oh, I can't it's remember cold. what it's called. But the, uh, and shoot me an email. Okay, he's, great. His hands in his pockets, everybody's right. cold. Yeah, just, uh, you know, like uh, aggregating. Yeah, some things, yes, other things I'll probably say, no, they don't do that. Like, yeah. Give me a list. Okay, great, cool. I, I had a question. It's probably persisted for a while, but I just noticed it. Um, the budget has the ISO settlement load uh, being less than the total energy in each month. ISO settlement does not include our losses. Right. Yeah. But in many months on the actuals, it was higher than the total energy. And I was trying to understand how that could happen. Hmm. Matching, maybe? I'm curious so want to make a note here. But I'm not going to be able to answer that right off the cuff, but I will. But do you see what I'm talking about? No, that's what I'm trying to do. Okay. So if you look, if you look at um, total, if you look at, let's say, just for January, yeah. just, okay? So January has on budget three point in round numbers three point four million kilowatt hours for total resource energy, and three point three for ISO settlement load. Okay. Yeah. So but, total ISO settlement is our yeah okay ISO settlement is at our. I can't give you the right abbreviation, but the point at which our power is received. Right. After that, now we have to pay for transmission services. Right. right. Well, we have, and we have losses, and we have right. losses. losses. Okay. But 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 in January, we've got total resource energy of 3.3, .3, and the actual of 3.3 .3 million, but the ISO settlement is 3.5. Okay. And I'm trying to understand how the ISO settlement can be higher than our total resource. Okay. And I just never noticed that before. And the budget always has it as being less, which makes sense to me. Well, the, I mean, the dam production in there? That may be what's doing it, but I, I, I don't know. 
Well, it was running in January, but was it way behind? You know, I can go and dig that up. But anyway, so that the was question. That. Give me your question one more time. I wrote it down. I want to make sure I got it right. What causes the ISO settlement load to be higher than the total resource energy when we budget on an actual basis in some months? When uh, when we budget in all months that it's lower than than the total resource okay. energy. I will get Sean to give us an answer. And, uh, just one question on the last page. Uh, looks like the delivered recs are the only thing that has got the actual at or below budget. Everything else is higher. Yeah. So that was a lot of delivered recs. Yeah, they were delayed. They were actually, they didn't get accounted for the previous months. Oh. And then they do that a lot. That's, for whatever reason, they get delayed by a month or two, and then they all fall in together. And that's what happens. So are these wrecks from uh, renewable contracts, or these, these are the wrecks from, from local production? No, DG. these will be from our... These are DG wrecks. The, the, no, these are from like Fitchburg. Or, oh, okay. Yeah, one of our contracts that provides okay. wrecks. Yeah. And some of them, like the Rite Aid uh, wood burner, which were mandated by legislation to take power, all these will be right. by that power. Those wrecks are always delayed for some reason. I don't understand their accounting, but that's a their thing. And all of a sudden, we'll get three months of those wrecks. <laughs> Mike, how are you and Beth going to tackle the budget? Well, that's going to be probably our primary goal when she gets here in January. Uh, but we probably won't have it until February. Could we bite it off in, in two bites? Because um, usually when you do a budget, you know, you do sort of one part first and another part second. Um, yeah, we could maybe in January we we month. yeah yeah what just not to dictate what comes first second it's more of you and Beth sort of assess where you're going to be anyway and then we we don't have to digest the whole thing in one sure day. that'd be good if others agree that'd be yeah. good because it feels I think it's healthier for us too since we're like already in the year and we don't have a budget we ought to at least be talking about it and working on it. I think that's. I think that makes a lot of sense. On on and like assumption areas. Sure. You know, this is what we're doing on pay, or this is what we're doing on, you know, demand. Yeah, I would say most things are pretty defined for next year, other than what do we want to do with the capital. So. Yeah. Yeah, maybe highlight those individual items. Yeah. This year there were anomalies, so we go back and say, "Oh, last year yeah. as well, that was the anomaly." Yeah. That's going to be hard. To yeah, we, I do do that when I when, when you get the layout. I have comments in the bottom, or I can put them on the side button. Oh, this yeah. is high because of X or Y. Mm -hmm. So, for example, uh, last year we finished the transmission rebuild, which was going to be you know a multi-year uh, project. But with COVID, everything kind of came to a screeching halt. We just ran with it and did three hundred thousand dollars work on that project. Yeah, and it worked out great, but. It was an anomaly. No. Yep. Right, here's another general question. With, with the ARPA funding, uh, Build Back Better is not happening right now, but uh, ARPA funding and uh, both the grant funding and the stuff coming through from the state, uh, are there any plans for applying for grants for AMI implementation, for example? Because my own well, our focus for AMI has discussed the other day. Even in at the company. Really pushing and a lot and uh, to similar to what other this one's nice. got. As far as grant monies go out of that and stuff, I have no idea. Oh, okay. the grant guy. Uh, but if there's money nice available sense. for free, we should, should certainly be going after it. Yeah, well, there's this four, there's the two. We got two R three RFIs from uh, from PUC for various things for controls. How are they going to spend money? And they're they're pretty convoluted, but we're going to forward them to you. Sure. All right. Yeah, we also had a, had a inquiry from some customers in Greensboro offering to 
looking to uh, available grant monies for us to utilize and uh, putting into the dam and Caspian. I said, absolutely. If you wow. This, yeah. Money, we'll spend yeah. it for you. Wow. Well, that's so, great. So that was a great offer. That's cool. And I, I've actually found the DOE grant, a series of DOE grants for micro grid installation, you know, under resiliency and other things. But, you know, I'll just look into that further so I see whether or not it's appropriate. Um, I have two new business items or other business. One is for you, Vince. Was there, has there been a meet, any meetings of the Energy Committee? Oh, is there yes. anything that we should know about? Uh, yeah, so I'm sorry, I should have brought that up. Uh, meeting last Monday, uh, met with Bill Pizzi, no one else showed up. Um, his intention is to, nothing that's significant to Cardo Collective at this point, other than that he's going to be doing audits on municipal buildings, making recommendations, stuff like that. Um, okay, that was one. The other um, is we're sitting here, some of us, in our coats, <laughs> pants and pockets. I had my gloves on for a while. It's good. It's killing all the COVID germs. No, no. no it doesn't. It's the opposite. It's opposite. <laughs> <laughs> it is just the opposite. <laughs> um, and and it was it was precipitate. It, it, what it was when I got me thinking about it was was Mike your question about you know can we use the screen so that you know we can see people and and whatnot is should we just be moving for at least for our January meeting and then you know we can take a look see and going to full Zoom and and not being in person yeah we might have to anyway the way the world's but well but it, it seems that there's a reluctance on the part of government of the state, the federal government isn't mandating for, for municipal governments. Right. The state is, is taking hands off and saying the towns can decide and Hardwick punted. Well, we'll see. They may not be I, punting in three weeks. Well, it may, cha weeks, no, it may change again, but, but I'm, just, I'm just, well, because we have to, if we're going to go full Zoom, then we need to, it needs to be warned that way and, and, and whatnot. And I'm, I'm just, and especially just thinking people are going to go away for the holidays. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the, yeah. ra the rates are already, mm -hmm. what, they're, what they're saying on Omicron is that it, case rates, cases are doubling every two days. Yeah, it's going to go crazy in the next month. And, and so mid-January. So why don't we plan for at least the next two months being remote? Yeah, I mean, it may be that things will have settled down by February, in which case, we, you know, we could do in yeah. person, but... I mean, you know, it, it, it's not like we get a lot of people coming, right. and with the exception of, of Mike, we're, we're an old board. You know, we're a bunch, we're a bunch of senior citizens. <laughs> Mike's getting there. He's close, but not quite. So another, another he's five still, or six still, years he's still qualified. He still qualifies as middle-aged. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, thank you. <laughs> um, but uh, it, just, it just seemed to me that that, that would be... Yeah, I think that's the master yeah. of the art, other than uh, yeah. beating me up, Scotty. Well, you gotta be somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that's hard listening, isn't it? Hard Try, trying to, you know, listen in on the phone. Oh, man, that was terrible. Yeah, the Zoom stuff last Zoom year I thought was fine. Yeah. yeah. And you can do Zoom on a phone. You can. But you don't see everybody. Right. You don't it's see really it. Listening. Yeah. yeah, but you can, but you can, if you set it on speaker, you know, to focus on whoever's speaking, mm -hmm. makes it a lot it'll easier. switch the screen to whoever's talking, yeah. and so you at least can see that person. And you yep. get it off these boundary mics instead of the phone. And we'll just have to remember these guys, whatever we're... Right, so I just shoot them a cloud a, a file the next morning or whatever. Good. Or whatever. Does anybody yeah. have any other business? Here I had something I wanted to add, but I can't. Send us a, send us an email and we'll put you know if it's if it's urgent we can always have no, you know. Just something I wanted to put on the radar. When it comes to being welcome to welcome yeah. to my world. Me <laughs> too. <laughs> um, want these? Want these? So I don't bring them home. No. Thank you. Want these? Donuts? No. Is there? It is um, seventh twenty nine. 
Can you pick one? No, yeah. Go ahead, Beth. Beth, you want a donut? No problem. I, I think Zoom's working on that, that function. Is there... Uh, is it? 728. 720. 720. Wow. 7 or 6? 7. 7. Wow. Time flies when you're having fun. Um, is there a motion to adjourn? I move to adjourn. Second. Third. Any objection? Hearing none, we are adjourned. Thanks, thanks a lot, Beth. Yeah, thank yeah. you.